The world is ancient, yet I walk it anew. This world once tried with people like me, but now only their ghosts remain. Now the humanoids are merely shells stuck to their old ways. Some sort of war must have cleansed the world of my brethren. What war? I do not know. But its remnant still terrorizes these people. After searching the town and its sewers, I met up with a man named Vaskalir. He promised me equipment and training to help me with what I believe is my reason to be raised again. To remove these remnants and let the world begin anew. Even though the task seemed minuscule, Vaskalir was grateful and handed me various old and worn equipment. I soon started to help the rest of the village with finding items they had lost or had stolen. They themselves dared not venture beyond the walls of the city. I don't blame them. It is overrun. The trolls and the orcs are a menace, but I did not expect the overgrown insects. Bugs the size of my head and spiders large enough to hunt wolves. When I returned, the trolls had broken into the library and set it ablaze. I learned how to best fight their guards and collapse their tunnels. But this felt organized. Something we weren't sure the trolls could plan on their own. I just proved right an orc shaman by the name of Kraknak Nork. It's the reason for all this hardship. Vaskler had a plan to end his reign, but for that I needed to be stronger. To help me against this foe, I went out scouting the island for equipment once belonged to people like me. And after seeing the beast they had slain, I vowed to become stronger. Strong enough that not even the dragon scales could withstand my blows. With this newfound gear and Vassal's plan, I felt prepared to face Kraknaknork. Infiltrated his forest, poisoned his food to weaken him, and navigated his magical maze to face him. One thing none of us expected was that a Knacknack Knork was just another link in the chain. With a chant and a sudden burst of dark magic, a demon was summoned to his side to aid him. I will not lie, I trembled in the demon's presence and might. Though all was not lost, I felt the tether that held the demon on this plane, and it came from Kraknaknork. With what strength and prowess I could summon, I kept up my assault. And after a battle that felt like days, Kraknaknork fell, and the demon returned to the hell it came from. But no rest was given to me. I learned that Kraknaknork was prepared to stop me. I knew I couldn't stay, even though the people on this island can't break their ways, I do not wish to endanger them further. Once more I went out searching the island, into its deepest pits and highest mountains. Finding gear of my brethren once wielded, and soon nothing on this island could hurt me. Not the minotaurs with their horns, nor the wasps with their poison, nor the goblins with their spears. Vaskar told me to go and speak to the statue, and I heard the oracle's voice. She asked if I was ready to meet my destiny. Even though I now enjoyed the safety of the island, I knew there was more for me to do. So I answered yes and sent me on a journey to discover. The journey took me to another island filled with husks. These were put here to train me. I studied the arcane and fought their mannequin foes many a time. And in the end I was chosen to become a paladin. By whom and why, I do not know, but the ranged weapon in which they shall excel gave me comfort that I do not need to face my coming foes up close. With a divine parting gift I said my farewells and boarded a ship to a town called Venora. During the journey my mind traveled back to the my memories of Frugard and Vascular. Was it actually a husk like everyone else I met? Or was his simple response as a mask that he put up to save himself or help me? 
These questions will never get an answer to. The Oracle said there was no going back. I did not have time to develop them as the mainland began to bear on the horizon. This is where my trials truly started. Venor was a town built upon a swamp, stench and sickness swirled in the wind. This is where I was needed. The inhabitants were poor and the trolls from the swamp had stolen what little medicine they had. This could not stand, the sickness was irreversible and drove them mad. I do feel regret for those I had to slay. With anger in my steps I ventured out into the swamp, knowing that diplomacy was never an option. I slayed them in the hundreds and brought back the medicine I could find. They did not have much to reward me with, and I did not want anything either. But the healer Ottokar did not take a no for an answer and gave me whatever belongings the deceased had left behind. It's not most scraps, but I found use in their scraps. Dressed in their broken garbs, looking like a simple beggar, I was disguised from the world and whoever was hunting me. Next I needed found, so I started working in a post office. Not the most glamorous, but they promised me a discount on travels for their rows and their ranks. Usable little founds had the light in my armor, having no home and travel all day tires the body. The ghosts. I miss their company. Sometimes I even try to talk to them, but get nothing but stale responses. Then I died. But had some divorce. But how do I keep telling this story? I don't know. All I remember is seeing someone at my corpse hiding my equipment, and then I woke up. Was that my brethren? Will they not allow me to leave this mortal coil? Now more than ever I knew there was something I had to do. Something of my kind failed to stop, perhaps. All I have is questions, but I will carry on. I kept working hard in the post of in the early days, and the evenings and nights were spent hunting the swamp trolls for more medicine. Soon I mastered them, they were no longer threat. Finally reaching the rank of Grand Postman, I could afford to travel to train. A husk by the name of Chris Laddams told me about animals and monstrosities alike that never stayed dead. He asked me to hunt these beasts to call their numbers and stop them from killing. The first ones was the crocodiles up north of Port Hope. It did not matter how many I slew, they came back. After days in the caves, filling them with blood and guts, I learned of the snapper. The snapper was ferocious, but he too fell. It gave me even more questions what was I found on his corpse. Health potions, emerald, and a ring. Why did a crocodile have these things? No time to ponder questions. I had acquired a rare bottle of dwarven ale that the boozer happily traded me for. The shovel I got felt weightless. What steel was this? I stole the gems and other trinkets and learned the magical words for the eternal spare and haste. When I returned to the caves, the crocodiles were back, and so was the snapper. Once more I slayed them to find the snapper, and once more he felt my spears. But once more I was left wondering, as the snapper this time had armor of plate on him. Could he once have been human? Once have been my brethren? More questions stayed in my head as I traveled the lands looking for anything to help me. A dwarf that was not hostile told me about his family heirloom being stolen by Minotaurs. I retrieved his family helmet and whatever loot the Minotaurs had gathered. The dwarf told me that the Minotaurs never stopped coming. With anger on his face, he asked me to kill their armies. Five thousand of them. The Minotaurs also come back from dead. Occasionally, I got gifts from the Oracle. Things to help me train and survive. From the north, I found a society that was interested in the dwarven pickaxe I found in their mines. 
They told me they were researchers and could help me to unknown lands if I joined them. However, I could not refuse. What if what I search are in these lands? I brought them near melting ice, rare flowers and colorful butterflies. And in return they helped me to the cold ice Icelands and the city of Swarground. The inhabitants of Swarground was cold. It was obvious that they did not like outsiders, but I had a mission here. Now the beast has been respawning in the hills and I needed to call them. Meeting the leader Sven, I convinced him to let me hunt on his ground in exchange for a test. These were the barbarian tests, a proof of adulthood. Honestly, most of it is a haze because of the cubous amounts of alcohol that was ingested in the first test. I have memories of a bear, but I am now considered one of them and get to walk these lands as they do. When I went to work, the mammoths were an admirable foe, but even they felt my spears. As a true barbarian, I made a shield out of their tusks to display my prowess over them. Their tusks got heavier over time. They got a toll of a man deep in the jungle that buys them. I'd never been this far into the jungle before, and I soon came to regret it. The man refused to buy my tusks until I found his brother. I could not help him, not out of my own will about what awaited me. I hiss louder and colder than the snake. So I ran, feeling like the entire jungle tried to kill me there. I survived and returned to Horadmir, this Iceland. Above a mountain that the mammoths seemed to protect, I found a mammoth the citizens called Blood Tusk. A foe that gore me more than once. But why did I feel sad for him when he fell? But I had no time to mourn. Grislan tells me the jungle got enwebbed by spiders. Spiders were the size of the Spider Queen I saw on Rukard. How had they grown this much? They attacked in packs, almost like wolves, <laughs> soldiers. They even had a leader, Hyde. How did I know his name? Why did a spider have clothes? Hyde even cast spells, similar to my haste, but tainted. I went out searching for answers, talked to scholars, thieves, witches, and even kings. Husks, all of them. Nothing but the same dialogue and inability to adapt to the world. So I give up. Went around the same place, killing the same beast, using whatever they wore that could help me. But something snapped me out of it. Something the thief said sparked a memory. He wanted ivory tusks, so that's what I set out to find. Claimed the pirates from the ice islands and hunted in the jungle the ones hunted me. I managed to give Dorian what he wanted, and he told me a name. Familiar. If he actually knew something, or if someone inhabited his body, I don't know. But the name Pick of what I knew. That was the name of the one I saw when I died. Why are the name new? Why did they help me? Why did I send them a package with items that are too heavy? What is my purpose? I don't know. All I know is that someone tries to stop me.